government is quite generously subsidizing by energy and very much electricity from burning wood. So far, the biggest biomass electricity scheme is by drugs, and there are four or five other schemes in the pipeline. Drax is on the front line of an initiative to convert our old polluting coal power stations to new polluting wood burning power stations. The reason for the conversion is air pollution. The air pollution in question that the, the European Union demand we close our, power station, our coal power stations for is sulphur dioxide. So they're going to convert these power stations to wood, which does not uh, emit much sulphur dioxide into the atmosphere and so keeps us within those limits. But pumps huge amounts of carbon into the atmosphere, more so than would be um, emitted through the burning of coal. Wood is less energy dense than coal, and as a result, if you look at the, the actual emission, carbon dioxide emissions coming out of a smokestack, they will be higher per unit of electricity for burning wood than they are for burning coal, and they're up to 50% higher. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, biomass power station that only burns untreated wood, they have recorded 76 different types of air pollution, some of which are linked to respiratory and heart disease, uh, potentially to strokes, cancer risks and birth defects. Specific biomass power stations plan to burn primarily a very high proportion of waste wood. So if you're burning waste wood, you've got even more than those 76. In England, there's a, a clear trend that um, biomass power stations are disproportionately uh, built or proposed to be built in more socially deprived communities. The air pollution issues are massive. When the government went for a biomass policy, it factored in quite a number of air pollution, of air pollution death years, as I think they called them, hundreds of thousands or even millions of them, knowing that people were going to die a few years earlier because of the particulates in the air emitted by stations like Drax burning biomass. <laughs> of course coal is bad. The point is that biomass is no better. So you're just walking down the just canal, what the down experience down and my eyes was stinging and I thought, well, you know, is it, what's this? So it feels like wood, it smells like wood. I'm just going to throw this stick into the canal just to show you how much rubbish is on the top of the canal. Because this is a still part of the canal, the wind's blown the dust all down and it's collected in this area. It's quite, um, quite a dense, dense, dense quite a it? dense area. So if I throw this stick in, you'll see how much there is. Now that's how thick the sawdust is. to supply wood pellets for the biomass industry. This is the Huddersfield Canal. This is one of the most protected waterways in the country. It's triple SI and SBI, which means it's a site of special scientific interest and special biological interest. And yet it's full of wood dust virtually throughout the year, but mainly in the summer. The waste wood site literally butts onto the canal towpath. Wood dust is a carcinogen. It's been recognised by the International Agency for Research on Cancer of the WHO for, for many years. And that means that it's harmful both inside the workplace and outside the workplace. And there's no safe level of a carcinogen. And so it has to be controlled. Daily, we get dust in our houses, on our cars. You can smell it, you can taste it sometimes. Sometimes you can't even come out here. If the wind's blowing in this direction, it's like snow sometimes. We can't use the garden as much as we like to do. We have to use the garden on, basically on a Sunday if the weather's permitting. Can't use it through the week. Can't have windows open. We rarely put the washing out. You get a thin dust everywhere as well, don't you? Um, 
I mean, the job I do, I've worked in quite a few houses down there, especially in the summer, and they all have a film of dust inside the houses. I moved into the cottage where I am now, which overlooks the plant, in 2007, in March. Within 12 months, I start to get really bad headaches and I was very tired all the time. I've had seven chest infections since I've lived here, never having had one before. Just continually run your nose, which is known as rhinitis. In this house, they've had children with nosebleeds, um, and the lady who lives there has got um, nasal erosion, she's got erosion of the nasal septum. We uh, did a door-to-door -door survey, um, one of the local councillors advised us to do that, and there was about, uh, I think it was just short of 100 people came back saying they had nosebleeds, um, headaches, respiratory problems, um, asthmas had got worse, some people said they'd got allergies to animals they'd never had before, they'd had pets for years and all of a sudden they were getting these allergies. We're very concerned as a group of the Road Call Regent Drive, just up the way, where we've just had another um, notification of um, a cancer case, so that's either 11 or 12 on the street and there's five stroke six Alzheimer's on that street as well which is way above the national average. We have a layer of dust every day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We came here in 96, I think they'd been in for maybe 12 months but they weren't doing anything like the work they are now. The prevailing wind comes this way up the comes from south to north so it just brings the dust and the sound from the process in fact um, plant in the rear yard we get all the sound we get all the dust we had traffic noise being disturbed at three o'clock on a Monday morning half past three during the rest of the week it was going on sometimes till 11 o'clock at night Alan developed bowel cancer last year near uh, Christmas last year so he's been on chemotherapy all last year and again we haven't been able to use the bedrooms for resting. The problem with such cancers is that nobody is actually really looking at them properly. The NHS isn't looking at them properly, local doctors won't be looking at them properly, the HSE isn't looking, the Environment Agency, Public Health England, there is no authority that is properly looking at such issues. This one is coming from old buildings, 30, 40 years old, lead paint, you've got paint flakes, heavy metals, some of which are carcinogens. Um, so not only have you got wood dust, which is a group one carcinogen, we believe we're being exposed to other contaminants, mixed pollutants, therefore there are carcinogens on top of carcinogens and you're getting a synergistic and multiplicative effect. There's no doubt that these chemicals the wood dust and what it might be contaminated with can cause cancer and there is no doubt that the particles are small enough to be carried a long way and can be absorbed into the body and there is no doubt from organisations like the WHO that small particles below 2.5 microns are carcinogenic and there's no safe level. The big problem with air pollution regulation limited to size is that the smallest sizes are completely ignored. Wood dust contains silica phytoliths. So if you have wood dust that's very, very finely divided in the air, it can travel long distances, get into the deepest recesses of the lung, the alveoli, some of them can cross into the bloodstream and they can be carried around the body to all the organs in the body. There are communities across the country who are complaining on a daily basis about dust and noise emissions. Originally we had a company called EGNI, Stobarts and a bunch of other people operating out of F Shed. They were grinding up wood just here. It was venting all over the road. You've also got metal, stroke, other crap piled up on the dock. No protection whatsoever. The wind hits it. You've got jay births. We've got film of them um, tipping grain, animal feed. Um, this stuff's poisonous. All along this side of the dock, you've got where they're now storing wood dust which again is venting across a mouth residence. This is the world's longest conveyor belt, which takes in coal from China and God knows where else, and dumps it just here. Coal dust isn't good for you. Grain dust isn't good for you. Wood dust 
it's definitely not good for you. We were campaigning in King Street to have dust monitoring put in. The Environment Agency would not do that. Bristol City Council would not do that. Uh, they still will not do it. The nearest air quality monitoring station is based up here. Now you've got lots of people with COPD, terminal lung disease, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. And you've got hundreds of people across Lawrence Weston, Shirehampton, Avonmouth with those kind of respiratory diseases. Um, skin complaints, asthma. I basically uh, put a complaint into the Environment Agency about Trudy Dove, who was a person that not only granted the uh, Boomerco, which were based just beyond my shed, um, grinding wood, but Edward Jones International, which were an F shed over there, and it was basically coming down like snow, it was like sand. It was like a sandy beach. That's what colour it was last summer. You can see the amount of pollution is falling on a daily basis. When it gets washed off the roof into the gutters and it just grows. Got the council to take samples from my bedroom window, my kitchen window, my front room window, uh, which they sent off and came back as lignin positive, which was wood dust. Uh, the EA took some samples, which got lost, unsurprisingly. My son has to keep going to the doctors, constant chest infections, constant colds, skin conditions. It gets everywhere, every single surface. It sticks to everything, it's brown. I've only been here a few minutes and I could already feel the effect of the dust. Yeah, your skin will itch at some point, you know. I recommend you wash quite significantly when you get back. Although the government speaks about air pollution being regulated, in practice uh, it's almost, it's virtually impossible for communities to stop applications um, on air quality grounds, regardless of how serious the background pollution, the existing pollution is, and regardless of how great the additional pollution will be. We've been to the authorities, they're basically just blanking us, they don't want to know, they say they've got data, we've asked for the data they can't provide the data. The Environment Agency monitor the dust, they don't tell you what's in it, we just get a, a report which will say fine particles. The council know that it's polluted, the Environment Agency know it's polluted, they're allowing more pollution um, and they're deliberately not monitoring. We're challenging the current legislation of 200 milligrams per metre square uh, where wood dust is classed by DEFRA and the government as a nuisance well, as far as we're concerned, a carcinogen is not a nuisance, especially when you find out that carcinogens have no safe level of exposure. There's certainly a miss being put out by companies that they are going to primarily use residues from sawmills or forestry or logging residues. That's not the case. There's not that much available in terms of residues. There's no doubt that the industry is already quite heavily reliant on whole trees. a massive pressure on forests. So in Canada, huge pressures are being put on boreal forests. In the southern US, we're seeing the destruction of ancient wetland forests. Virginia to Arkansas and everywhere in between, we have some of the most diverse forests in the world. It's the highest tree species diversity in North America. And in terms of temperate forests, it's actually some of the highest in the world. You have a stretch where it'll go from the swamps of the coast all the way across to the Piedmont area which would be mixed pines and hardwoods and then into the mountains these rich forest ecosystems with migratory songbirds and some of the most beautiful sites you're going to see in North America.
Dogwood Alliance was founded in 1996 because rural communities across the southern U.S. were facing an invasion of chip mills and the paper industry. The southern U.S. is the largest paper producing region in the world. We produce around 15 to 20 percent of the world's paper supply. Many of the agreements we've gotten from big paper companies have uh, eliminated some of the worst practices. So, you know, companies that have agreed to end the conversion of natural forests to plantation, to map and get out of endangered forests, to stop using large scale clear cutting and then meanwhile over the last two or three years what we've seen is a dramatic increase in a whole new industry which is the bioenergy industry. Drax is buying wood pellets from a company called Inviva. Inviva is producing pellets from hardwood because Drax needs wood pellets that come from slow growing trees in order to not muck up their system essentially. They're relying on these hardwood wetland forests that house so much of our biodiversity on the coast that are important for flood protection from catastrophic climate change, that are filtering water for local communities. Nobody come in the neighborhood to get, get our opinions about a new plant coming in town. It, it was done behind our back. We believe that everyone should have a clean, safe place to live, work, and play. Um, and Viva has come in and distracted the living conditions of this community. Since the Viva opened up, we um, were having quite a few problems. One thing that came through the uh, wide now road is so the big trucks would come through much faster, and uh, they're creating a whole lot of dust. They're making a lot of noise. I mean, the machine is making a lot of noise at nighttime. Well, I tell you, my concern is that noise and that beating and that bumming all through the night. Your homes are here, and they put something like that right in the middle. It just seemed like something could be done about it. You know, I just didn't thought that you could rob people from their sleep. When we, we move from a noisy place, come to a quiet place, but when the company moved there, it's noise all night. And my husband had to get up and go to work at four o'clock, and he constantly, you know, he can't get any sleep. His bronchitis has been acting up, my son's silences, allergy, been acting up real bad. We started meeting with the group here in Northampton County in June, and we've had about five or six meetings. We've also met with some of the corporates from Inviva, and we're still trying to come up with some solutions because this is what they're gonna have to live with. Um, it's an injustice to them. Close to 90% of the forests in the southern U.S. are privately owned. Governments are unwilling to regulate private lands, which means that anything goes. The amount of carbon stored in an old tree will never be met with a new tree, especially if it's going to be cut down 12 years later to burn the next one. You lose carbon in the soil, you lose carbon in transportation, you lose carbon in getting it over to Europe, and then you lose carbon when you burn it. The most recent science says that when you burn a forest from the south, you create a 35 to 50 year carbon debt. In other regions where forests are even more slow growing, they're talking about 80 to 100 years. If we can stop places like the UK and Europe from their hunger for this industry, that that will help take pressure off the world's forests. I was inside to ask some questions about biomass sourcing. They deny clear felling. They admitted to using some hardwood, but they wouldn't comment on questions about the Northampton facility of Enviva. Without biomass, Drax would have to close in 2016. Of course it's a strategic decision that they made very carefully. We invited shareholders to disinvest from Drax and invest in something that has real carbon benefit and does not damage the planet, will be cheaper and not dependent on subsidies. At that point, we were escorted from the room. No to coal, no to biomass. Shut down tracks. No to coal, no to biomass. Shut down tracks.
Brazil, very diverse and ecologically important ecosystems are cleared completely for eucalyptus plantations. Eucalyptus requires a huge amount of water, and there's documented cases of watercourses drying up, rivers becoming much more shallow, and then the agrotoxins or pesticides and herbicides that are used in the plantations pollutes the water resource as well. The Cerrado ecosystem, the transition between the savanna grasslands and the Amazon rainforest, it's very species diverse, but it also supports a lot of communities that have occupied the lands for generations. This land is usually grabs. Communities have basically just said no, and they've been standing in front of bulldozers, and there's also been injunctions taken out against the company Susano, really making Susano have to leave. But then, of course, there are the communities that haven't been able to resist so effectively. Susano is one of the companies that's very heavily involved in development of genetically engineered trees. The U.S. Department for Agriculture a couple of years ago gave the go-ahead for very, very large-scale so-called trials, but really large-scale plantings of genetically engineered eucalyptus. And the company, which is called Abergen, has got an application in uh, for commercialization. If you look at the website of Abergen, they have a huge interest in bioenergy. They really see that as the big new market and using it as a rationale to put forward claims that genetically engineered trees will be faster growing, they'll be more efficient, we can get more wood from less land and so on. They will basically be entirely uncontrollable over a much bigger area than you'd have just with, say, GM corn or soil. What exactly the impacts will be and what mutations will happen and how they will spread and how they might crossbreed with trees and ecosystems is really not known and there are huge concerns. <laughs> to protest against the biomass industry's great jamboree and conference here. We will move swiftly on to the awards, the biomass awards. Third, with a green ribbon, because they're so green. The majority of their investment last year went to tracks. Who seconds? Is it dead? Is it crap? It was close. Only 2% between them in your vote. It cracks the destroyer. And finally, we know who the really big wooden spoon goes to, don't we? Because it was their idea in the first place. It was them who put all the subsidies and the targets in place. It's them who don't listen to the science. It's them who commission a biomass carbon calculator from their chief scientist and then when the results are inconvenient they suppress it it's coming out in may they can't suppress it any longer we hope it'll be really embarrassing for the department of energy and climate change talking about asbestos dust no one would have any hesitation to say that that's dangerous for you and yet most people are not aware that wood dust is an equal carcinogen for the last 20 odd years. It will kill people. It's as simple as that you know you can't get much more of a, a, a risk to people's health than death and it will kill people, it will shorten people's lives. <laughs>